Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create custom inventories. So in the last episode, I showed you guys how to work with items, which is item stacks within Bucket, and then also how to work with inventory so that we can access a player's inventory, give them items and some basic stuff like that. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create custom inventories, which is pretty useful because you can give your players menus to work with, and also just other types of graphical user interfaces that are otherwise not possible without plugins. So let me give you an example here. So if I do slash menu, so this menu pops up and then we can see that we have three options here. We have feed, kill, and give sword. So if I do feed, it's gonna feed my hunger bar. If I do give sword, it's gonna give me a sword or how, however many I want. It also send me a message. And if I do a kill, I killed myself. So that's a very basic custom menu. So as you can see here, if we open it up again, this is just a regular chest, um, except that we can customize the number of slots. So we can set it to any multiple of nine because one single slot uh, row is nine uh, slots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then that goes up to 54. So you can have a full chest, a full double chest worth of slots or you can have as low as nine if you want to. So so anyways, with that said, I'm gonna show you guys how to create those types of inventories, how to use event listener so that you can listen for clicks so that whenever clicks happen in your custom, custom inventory, you can have custom things happen. So let's jump into the code and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is create a custom command so that we can uh, test this out. So we're gonna call it the player menu command. So whenever the player runs slash menu, it's going to open that menu that you you just saw. So we can do implements. Okay, so we saw last episode that we can obtain an inventory by doing dot get inventory on a player. That will simply give you the player's inventory. Pretty simple. Um, but to create a custom inventory, we can do that by doing inventory inventory is equal to and make sure you import inventory from bucket. So and to create a custom inventory, you can do bucket dot create inventory. So if we just take a look at the four options that we have here, we have a very basic one. So this is going to take a inventory holder which in this case would just be our player and then a size. And then for a regular chest inventory that we're gonna be working with, um, it's just gonna be multiples, multiples of nine. Uh, and then otherwise you have inventory holder and then inventory type. So there's other types of inventories besides the chest inventory, but for basic menus and user interfaces and stuff like that, you're always gonna be using a menu for the most part. But if you want to, you can use other types of inventories. So uh, you can play with that if you want to. Um, and I do work with them in future videos. So uh, I will show you some examples of how to do that. But for now, we're going to stick to chest inventories. Uh, then we have inventory owner, size, and then title. So you can specify a title for the inventory, which is very useful. And then finally, you have inventory owner, inventory type, and then title. So so yeah, pretty self-explanatory here. So let's go ahead and try this out. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, player for inventory holder. We're going to do nine for nine slots. And then we're going to do chat color dot aqua. And we're going to say custom GUI. So this here is just simply customizing the title of the inventory as you saw when I gave you the example. So that's pretty useful. You can use, you know, your chat colors and formatting and stuff like that on it, which is also awesome. Uh, so you can make it look even cool, cooler. So by default, when you use create inventory and you don't specify the type, this is just going to be the chest inventory I told you about. So this will be multiples of nine. So nine for one row, 18, uh, 27, 36, 45, and 54. 54, there we go. So these are the different options you can choose for your inventory size up to 54. So you have uh, up to six rows of space, which is very large. So um, yeah, anyway, so pretty simple. And then after that, what we can do is start adding items to our inventory. So if we just imagine that this inventory is actually a menu, we'll call it menu. The items in our inventory are actually the buttons of the menu, okay? Now I'm just giving you this example here of a menu inventory just because that's probably the most common use case for custom inventories, but you can you can do whatever you want. You could just have a inventory open up that gives a player an item and they can move it around, they could do whatever they want with it. Or if you want to, you can create like a custom backpack plugin so that the player does slash backpack and opens a backpack so they can store stuff in, anything you want but I like to work with menus the most, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what buttons are we gonna want for our menu? So we're gonna do item stack, feed, feed. It's gonna be a new item stack, material dot bread. There we go. Item stack, death is gonna be another new item stack. TNT, item stack, sword is gonna be a new item stack, material, diamond sword. And then now we can add some metadata for our items that we just created. So, so I'll do the first one and then I'll copy the ones after that just so we can save time because I don't really think there's a point in me typing everything out. So we'll do item meta, feed meta is equal to feed dot get item meta. So we're getting the item meta of our feed item 
And then now we can edit the metadata of that item. So we can do feed meta dot display name. And we could do something like chat color dot green. And we could say feed. And then we can also add some lore so we can pr provide some more information on what this button actually does. That's what lore is good for in this case. So we could do set lore and that's going to accept a list of strings. So an easy way to provide a list of strings is you could do list dot of and then you could just simply type in a comma separated list of strings chat color dot gold hunger no more something corny like that and then after that after we're done setting all of the lore for our item for our button here we can do feed dot set item meta feed meta never forget that you're gonna forget it at least a couple times in your minecraft plugin creation career so uh that's okay anyway so after that we can add the item meta for the other item so let me go ahead and copy that real quick like I said, there we go. So now we have the death meta. So this is just going to say kill for the title. And then it says death is inevitable. So that will make you kill yourself. And then we have sword meta. So this will say in gold, give a sword. And then it says the sword of a king. Very, very corny. There we go. So now we have all of the items that we want to exist in our inventory. So now all is left is just to add the items to our inventory. So there's different ways you could do that. So we're going to do menu dot and you could do add item and you just pass in a list of items to add and it'll just add it to the first available slots. You could do set contents, which is another way of doing it just with an array of item stacks. Or if you want to be precise and set it into specific slots, we can use set item like we did in the last episode. So we can provide an index. Oops. We can provide an index and an item stack to go in that slot. So I want to make it so that the items are spaced out and look nice. So we're going to have one item here, one item in the middle here, and then one item on the end here. Um, and you could add whatever other items you want to if you want to play around with more items. Uh, I encourage you to do that actually. But it's zero base, so this will be slot zero. This will be slot um, zero, one, two, three, four, and this will be slot five, six, seven, eight. So zero, four, and eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that. So zero is for feed menu item dot menu. Four is going to be for death, and then menu dot set. 8 is for sword. There we go. So now we're adding so now we're adding all of the items to our inventory. So the only thing left to do now is go ahead and open that inventory for the player. So currently we've actually created the inventory. It actually exists now, but we need to make it so that the player actually views it. It's going to open for them so they can actually see the options. And we could do that by doing player dot open inventory and just pass in the inventory. So we can just pass in menu. There we go. Pretty simple process overall. I hope you understand it. Pretty, it's, you know, step by step. Just create the inventory, give the items some, you know, metadata, make them look nice, and then uh, add the items to the inventory, and then open it for the player. So just as a note here, if we open this uh, chest that we have here and we pretend that this is a custom inventory, this means that we have 36 slots, right? So the size of the inventory is 36 because we have nine times three for three rows, and so. Uh, I just want to say that if you're trying to position items in certain spots, you just need to know that it starts from the top left and goes down to the bottom right. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 35. Because 0 through 35, it's 0 based. So if you try positioning something and it doesn't work out how you expect, you probably just um, need to know like how that counting is done. So, so now that the player can actually see the inventory when they run the command, we need to actually make it so that stuff happens whenever... The player clicks on the inventory so they click items or try moving items and stuff like that so the way that you can do that of course is with listeners we already have a listeners package so i'm going to right click do new java class we'll say inventory or menu listener how about that all right so we're going to do public void on inventory inventory click inventory click event event so this is the, probably the most common inventory event that you can work with, which is the inventory click event. So this event is called when a player clicks an inventory. Um, there's other ones that you can work with though, um, for different use cases. Sometimes you may want to do inventory drag event or inventory uh, creative event or interact event, move item event. Um, but this click event really encompasses most of what you would need to do. So I think it's a good starting point. All right, so let's just think about what's gonna happen here. So this is gonna be triggered whenever a player clicks an inventory, any inventory of any type. So what we want to do is check to see, first of all, did the player click our inventory, meaning the custom inventory that we just made them see here. 
And so there's a few different ways you can actually test that. You can check the title of the inventory that they clicked on and see if it matches the one that you are showing them. That method has a flaw just because there could be multiple inventories that are open by different plugins that maybe have the same name. I mean, it's probably pretty rare, but it can happen. So a more safer approach, and I definitely show this in future videos in a lot of videos, is something called a menu manager. It's just some piece of code that I wrote so that whenever you open these menus for players, it keeps track of the menus. And so you're keeping track of it in code and you're not checking titles explicitly. You're just checking to see if the inventory that the player has clicked on is the same menu that you're actually showing them. It's definitely an advanced topic. So whenever you get to that point, um, you should find it pretty interesting. But for basic plugins that you're gonna be creating at this point in the series, we're only like episode 14, I believe, at the time we're recording here. Um, this is a really good approach. Just check the title and to see if it's the same one as the one that you just opened for the player. So so to check the title of the inventory, we can do e.getView. And so this is actually something that was introduced in I think Java 1.14, or not Java, um, Minecraft 1.14. Uh, for previous versions of Minecraft, you would do e.getInventory.getTitle. So if you're gonna be working with a Minecraft uh, version of like 1.8, for example, you would wanna do it this way because that's the old way of doing it for Bucket and Spigot. But nowadays you do get view and an inventory view is just a, a, a view linking two inventories in a single player whose inventory may or may not be one of the two. So anyway, so we can go ahead and do get title and now we can do equals ignore case because it's a string that it's giving us. And we could say something like, um, what's the name of our title here? It's custom GUI. So we'll copy that and paste it here. So there's actually a flaw with this and I'll explain this in a minute. I'm not gonna explain it now just so that we can figure this out. But anyways, for now we can see that we're getting the view that the player has clicked on, which is just behind the scenes, the inventory. We're getting the title of it and checking to see if it matches the title of our custom inventory that we opened for the player before. So now we wanna to check to see what item the player clicked on so we can handle that logic. So um, we can do that by doing switch or you can use an if statement if you want to and you can do e .get current, get current item get type. So we're gonna check against different types because in this inventory we have three different options. We have a bread, we have a TNT, and we have a diamond sword. So we can go to do case bread. So if it's bread, then we wanna run some code. We can do player dot, and we don't have player, so we can do player, player is equal to player e dot get who clicked, cast that into a player, import player. So now we can go back down here and do player, dot set food level to 20 which is the max level for the food and then we could do player dot send message yum quite bussing don't you love when you just have some really bussing food and then otherwise so another case would be the second item so this would be tnt so we're going to do player dot set health to zero to kill them and then we'll do player dot send message you just unalived yourself and then we'll do case diamond sword. And for this one, we wanted to make it so that a player, when they click a diamond sword in the in the menu, it gives them a diamond sword. So we can do player dot get inventory. If you remember from last episode, uh, and then we can do add item, and we can do new item stack material dot diamond sword diamond sword. There we go. And then we can do player dot send message. Don't slice yourself. Okay, so now it's checking to see what the type of the item is and it's gonna match against these different cases here. So depending on what item you click on, it'll do different stuff. Pretty cool, right? And another thing I wanna add here is if you wanna make it so that it only does this for left clicks and it ignores it for right clicks, um, you could do something like this. You could say if e.get or is right click, if it's a right click, then we just wanna return. So it's just gonna do an early return out of this method here, out of this listener. So that's not gonna run any, any of this code here. So, so this will be triggered whenever a player clicks an inventory, any inventory. So the first thing that we're gonna do is check to see if the inventory that was clicked has the same title as our custom inventory. If it does, then make sure it's a left click. If it's a right click, then just return. Um, if it's a left click, then we're gonna get the player who clicked on it. And then now we're gonna use a switch statement to see uh, which item they clicked on. So if it's a bread, we're gonna feed them. If it's TNT, we're gonna kill them. If it's a diamond sword, we're gonna give them a diamond sword. So this is a very basic approach to handling menu actions. So handling when a menu is clicked. So this is the basis for how you can create GUIs, graphical user interfaces for your Minecraft plugins and make them even more advanced. I swear like 
And when I learned this for the first time, I was making pretty basic plugins, but then once I learned how to make GUIs for the plugins, it gets even more advanced because it's much more pleasing to work with the GUI than run commands, right? All right, I'm back on the server now, so let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do slash menu, and here we see our menu. So we see custom GUI, that's how we wanted it with the aqua color. So now if we click something, nothing happens. That's not good, right? All right, so I know what the issue is, and let me go back to the code to show you. So if we go to our menu listener here, so to check to see if it's the proper inventory, we're doing e.getView.getTitle, right? And the title is going to be, hopefully, this text that we provided, which should be the same text as we have here when we create the inventory, except we're missing one thing. Right here, we specify just the text without the color code, but here we specify it with the color code. So maybe that's obvious for some people, but if this is your first time working with inventories, it may not be obvious that you also need to um, include the formatting um so that it actually does the equals ignore case properly or you should probably do uh equals like that not ignore case but same point though same point stands like you need to have the the color that is used in the inventory title here as well so if we just go ahead and copy this and put this in front now it should match to the proper inventory title the alternative to this would be to do something like this where you do e dot give you get title just take that and do chat color dot strip color so this will take any string with color and formatting in it and it will just you know strip it take it away so it should just give you the string itself just the the name of the, t of the title so now you can do it like that if you want to but i kind of prefer the first way i showed you just include the same formatting that you have here um, and something that you can do to make this more consistent is that you can store the title in one place maybe in some other class somewhere um, so that you can share it across classes so you have to keep track of uh, the same title in multiple places, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, just make sure you do that and it should work. So let's go ahead and throw this back on the server and see what happens. Okie dokie, so now that we're on the server, we can do slash menu again. And now if we click an item, boom, it says yum, quite bussing. So it is definitely working. You can see that it's activating every time we click it. Same thing for kill. So if we click kill, boom, I died. Exactly how we wanted it to work. And then for sword, boom, now we're getting the sword. But you'll notice one thing, right? we can actually pick up the item and move it around. So this is not really ideal for a GUI that we're trying to have on a plugin. Like an actual plugin uh, GUI is not gonna make it so that you can move around the items. That doesn't really make sense. So something that you should know is whenever you want to make it so that items do not move around, go to your menu listener where you handle the inventory click event and all you have to do is cancel it. So uh, right here afterwards, when we check to see if it's a right click or not, um, and we get the player and all that, we can do e.set canceled to true so now it just cancel the click event we can still get all the data same as any event that we cancel except that it's no longer going to actually go forward with the action that it's going to do so it's no longer going to pick up the item it's no longer going to allow you to move items so very important um so let's go ahead and make sure this works okay we're back on the server now so let's test it one more time and boom so now we can click it and it's not picking up the item and also if i hold shift and click or try moving something it does not work no matter what i try so everything is working perfectly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's how you can create basic custom inventories for Minecraft plugins. Of course, there's a lot more I could show you, like other types of inventories, but they're all pretty much the same. And like I said before, the chest one is going to be the, the one that you're going to be using most of the time anyway. So those are the basics of how you create the custom inventories and also how you handle um, you know, when items are clicked within it. So now you can spice up your plugins with custom user interfaces. As you progress through this plugin series, you're going to see a lot more stuff uh, on the same topic with uh, my menu manager that I told you about before, where you can uh, start working with complex inventory systems and stuff like that. Um, it just gets a lot more advanced. So keep watching and uh, keep learning. And uh, yeah, peace. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, and if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources, but also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you want to support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below, and this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos and you could just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace